Hello and welcome to the lecture series on economics of growth and development. In the previous class, we have seen the general characteristics of developing countries or underdeveloped countries. In today's lecture, I'll be talking about the economic characteristics of underdeveloped countries or developing countries. So let's get started. The first economic characteristic is low gross national income per capita or low gross national product per capita. So these two are very good indicators of economic welfare and unfortunately, we don't find good figures as far as developing countries are concerned, as far as least developed countries and underdeveloped countries are concerned. So therefore, in the previous class, I have used the World Bank uh, country classification to look at the lower income countries, the middle income countries and the high income countries. So please check that video. It will give you more insights into low GNP or GNI as an indicator or as an economic indicator of development. So please refer to that. So I hope the first point is pretty much clear. You will find bad numbers in terms of GNP per capita or GNI per capita as far as underdeveloped countries are concerned or the developing countries are concerned. Let us now move to the second point which is of immense importance. It is large income inequalities. So for greater uh, the, 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 uh, the la in income inequalities are greater in developing countries as compared to far greater in developing countries as compared to the developed countries. It is not that there is no income inequality in the developed world. It is there, but I'm talking about it in relative sense. When you look at it with the perspective of developing countries, you will find more in income inequality between the rich and the poor. And that is why it is again an economic characteristic of developing countries. The Oxfam report. Now, this is the, these are the current numbers for India I'm talking about. So the Oxfam report 2020 suggests that India's richest 1% hold more than four times the wealth held by 953 million people who represent the 70 percent of the populace. So this is the condition or this is the income inequality which is reflected in terms of developing countries. So I hope the idea of large income inequalities is pretty much clear. They are far greater as compared to the developing world. I'm not saying that there are no income inequalities in the developed world. There are but in, in relative sense you will find greater inequality in the developed countries or underdeveloped countries as compared to the developed world. So I hope the Oxfam report gives you a, a little sense of how the in, uh, income inequality looks in India. I will also share the link for this uh, Oxfam report 2020 in the description. So please go and check that as well. So let us now move to the third point, which is low levels of productivity. Now, why there are low levels of productivity in the developing countries? It is because there are lack of skills. Skills are not there illiteracy is there there is poor training and uh, and other aspects which are leading to which are leading to low or poor productivity in terms of both labor as well as capital there furthermore unhygienic working conditions malnutrition labor force reflect in poor productivity so there are underlying conditions which further adds up to la low labor productivity they are related to working conditions as well as the healthcare of the worker per se so this is again a problem associated with developing countries and hence we are studying it as a characteristic of developing countries that is low levels of productivity so i hope this point is pretty much clear let us now look at the next point it is lack of industries and expertise per se yeah so in the mo in, in, in most of the developing countries, the process of industrialization is in the nascent stage or it is in the primary stage. And as a result, you find lack of industries and expertise, which 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 adds up to the underdevelopment of the countries. Yeah. So this is again a problem associated with the developing countries and hence a characteristic of the same. Let us now move to the next point, which is talking about high levels of unemployment in the general characteristics i talked about it so uh, i talked about unemployment as well as disguised unemployment as a problem and you will find this unemployment in both the rural areas as well as the urban areas so that is again a problem associated with developing countries and a characteristic of the same let us now move to the sixth important point which is called as dualism now dualism means all the sectors are not well developed in comparative sense. All the sectors are not well developed in comparative sense, meaning thereby you will find the urban areas and the urban sector pretty well developed as compared to again, I'm talking about it in relative sense, the rural areas, you will still find the rural people using the old outdated technology vis-a-vis -vis the urban ones using the latest technology. So therefore, this is again a problem and hence you will see something called as rural to urban migration in most of the 
developing countries yeah there's one very good book uh, written by chinmay tumbe he is a professor at iim ahmedabad india moving the history of migration in india so you should know there are different aspects to migration as well dualism is one of them why because in the urban areas you get good housing you get good technology you get good access to services on the contrary it is not there in the rural areas so again dualism is a characteristic of uh, least developed countries or underdeveloped countries or developing countries let us now move to the next point which is dependence now most of the developing countries are dependent on the world for majority of their sources or resources to be very precise one is the energy resources the other is capital then we have technology etc so the higher dependence upon others is is again a problem and therefore it is a characteristic of developing country let us now i hope the idea is pretty much clear let us now move to the next point which is lack of basic infrastructure so you will have poor transportation you will have poor communication services you will have uh, water services poor water services piped water connection is uh, is a dream for most of the places in in countries like india then we have Uh, improper financial services to be very precise financial illiteracy is again a problem then we have digital divide that is with respect to technology you have problems so these are again basic infrastructures which are needed for a country and there is a lack of the same in most of the developing countries and hence it is a characteristic or economic characteristic to be very precise let us now move to the last point which is talking about deficit balance of payment what usually happens is we are importing or most of the developing countries are importing capital goods and they are exporting primary goods so therefore for capital goods you have to shell out more money and when you export the primary goods you are getting money uh, the, the value of money which you are getting is really small to cover up the imports which you usually have so therefore you always have a deficit balance of payment and therefore this is a characteristic or economic characteristic of developing countries so i hope the uh, the idea of economic characteristic of developing countries or under developed countries or least developed countries is pretty much clear in the next classes i'll be talking about this the socio cultural characteristics the demographic characteristics the technological characteristics the political and administrative characteristics and so on so please stay tuned thank you